2018 was a big year for ag law developments impacting producers across the country. We now continue our journey through the top 10, bringing us to number seven, specifying a critical habitat under the ESA. Roger McOwen with the Washburn University School of Law joins us once again. So Roger, what exactly specifies a critical habit? Can you give some background? Well, that's a designation that the Secretary of Interior makes whenever there is a threatened or endangered species. They have to designate the habitat that's going to be protected. Now, what protected means for a farmer or rancher is I'm not going to be able to do my normal things that I would like to do on my property. I may have to change my farming um, habits, uh, my practices. I may be prevented from farming in particular areas. So it becomes very restrictive. And we had a case in 2018 where the government tried to say that unoccupied habitat where a little frog hadn't been seen since 1965 was going to be designated. That issue made it all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court unanimously reversed the, the Circuit Court of Appeals and said no. For habitat to be habitat, it has to be habitable, so that the creature has to actually be there, <laughs> not 50 years ago. And that was a big win for agriculture and, and rural landowners in general. Absolutely. We're always looking for those law precedent cases. Okay, so let's talk about what else is on the list. We've got number six. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Supreme Court says states can collect sales tax on remote sellers. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, this has been a big issue ever since the Internet came about uh, 20, 25 years ago. And, and this case came out of South Dakota. South Dakota is one of those states like Tennessee where we're at right now that doesn't have a state income tax. And so they look for other sources of revenue. And one of those is sales tax as well as property tax. But South Dakota enacted a law that they knew was deliberately unconstitutional because the Supreme Court says, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court, going back in the 1960s, has said that if you're going to hit a company, a business with sales tax, they have to have a physical presence in your state. Well, with the advent of online sales and people in rural areas in particular selling things out of their home to make additional income for the, the farm right. and for the family, um, you sell to buyers all across the country. Well, here is the South Dakota law, and the South Dakota Supreme Court said you can't do that. That's unconstitutional. Well, they had deliberately wanted it to be ruled unconstitutional so they could force the U.S. Supreme Court, hoping the U.S. Uh. Supreme Court would take it to force them to at least look at overturning 50 years of precedence on the issue, and they did in 2018. But they said, I think there are two key points out of that case. Because South Dakota put in a, a limit to exempt a lot of small businesses, you have to have a certain number of revenue uh, dollars of sales, and you have to have a certain number of transactions before you're, you have to collect sales tax from your buyers. Um, you're exempt. And so I think uh, what the Supreme Court is saying is if other states will model what South Dakota did, they can tax out-of-state sellers, even though those sellers are not a Walmart, they're not a, a big box store, for example, that has a physical presence everywhere. You're, you're going to be exempt. So I think that's the saving grace for agriculture in this one. But it's a huge development because now sales tax has opened up to a lot of online sales, including small uh, rural areas, small businesses, and people selling out of their home in rural areas, too. Absolutely. You know, we talked a lot about pollutants and groundwater in 2018. Let's talk about this year. It's number five. Mm -hmm. Give us a recap of what happened and how that might change what happens going forward in 2019. Well, in, in 2018, we had three big cases from three different circuit courts of appeals reaching two different results. So this is one of these issues I would encourage people to, to keep on the radar. This may be an issue that goes to the U.S. Supreme Court in 2019 or 2020. And it's a big issue for crop agriculture and especially irrigated crop agriculture because the issue in the case is whether a discharge of a pollutant, and we can think of that in terms of it being broadly construed, which it has, of saying herbicides and pesticides that are on the ground and then you've got irrigation equipment and it soaks into the ground and ultimately finds its way through the subsurface into a subsurface stream that gets into a, a water of the United States. If the courts say, which two of them did this year, that a discharge into groundwater is regulable under the Clean Water Act, then we've got serious implications for irrigated crop agriculture. We had a third circuit court that said, nope, you have to have a direct uh, pollutant discharge into surface water. Groundwater doesn't count. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Keep your eye on what the Supreme Court says in 2019. Absolutely. Okay, I feel like I should hand over a check to you after getting <laughs> that kind of knowledge dropped in that amount of time. Okay, but we're not done with you. We get to talk more with you going forward. 
forward throughout the remainder of the day. Thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned. We'll have more with Roger McGowan with the Washburn University School of Law.